Welcome to today's video, guys. Um, as you've already probably heard the news, I mean, because why wouldn't you? Akira Toriyama has passed away. Uh, he was 68 years old, and he passed away on March 1st due to a blood clot in his brain. What I wanted to do today is share my story of how I got into Dragon Ball. Because many of you probably grew up watching Dragon Ball. I mean, the impact that Dragon Ball has had has been crazy, absolute insane. There's so many people, so many different age groups, uh, different backgrounds, and they all grew up loving Dragon Ball. And it was such a big part of their childhood. My uncle, who was born in 1988, loved Dragon Ball. He loves it. And to this day, he still loves it. I, who grew up in 1999, love Dragon Ball. And we talk about it all the time. And, you know, we, we own figures and, and we collect uh, Dragon Ball figures and things like that. And every time that the new movie comes out, you know, we'll see it and stuff like that. Or, you know, I've gone to the theater to watch the last two Dragon Ball movies that have come out with my wife. So there's been this thing where Dragon Ball has been a part of my life and the life of millions for so long. And it doesn't matter when you were born or when you got into it. You know what I'm saying? And the impact on the world and the influences, you know, it, it, it speaks for itself. So once again, what I'd like to do today is in the honor of Akira Toriyama and all the incredible work that he did throughout his life, I want to talk about my first time getting into Dragon Ball, which I think is actually kind of funny because growing up, you know, I don't know, it might be a male thing. It might be a Hispanic thing. It might be the way you see things uh, in the world. It's like there's always this you want to be mature. You want to be a, an adult. You want to be a man. You want to you know, you have these things of what a man is and how strong you need to be and how certain things are just nerdy or like wearing glasses may be nerdy or wearing braces is nerdy and things like that. That's the type of thing that I grew up in, the type of environment that I had. For some reason, um, I always thought Dragon Ball was like whack or stupid growing up. Like as a kid, it's like I never really let myself like it because I was thinking like, well, this is probably like lame or it's not cool or something like that. For some reason, it was something in my head where it's like it wasn't cool. Well, the funny thing is, I was in about fifth grade, I believe. And I think it might have been fifth grade or, or sixth grade, one of the two. And, and I can't remember the exact time, but it was one of the two. I remember scrolling, and I remember the day exactly. I'll paint it for you. I was in my living room, and we had a couch that uh, reclined. And I was sitting on that couch. My parents were in the other room making food, and I was scrolling through the TV on the channels. We had direct TV at the time. As I was scrolling through, I see an episode of Dragon Ball Z. Kai. I know, I know. Don't get it. Don't don't come at me. But I saw an episode of Dragon Ball Z Kai. And I see it and I'm like, oh my goodness, they're Dragon Ball. You know, I was like a fifth grader, so I was just being stupid, immature. I'm like, oh, that's so lame, you know, and I skipped the channel. But then I'm like, mm, hold on. And I click the channel and I go back to it. It was freaking uh Goku and Vegeta staring at each other on the mountain when they're about to fight. And I was like, ah, how Ah, there's nothing else to watch. Whatever. I just watched this crap. I sat there <laughs> as a fifth grader, watched that unfold, and it was magical. It was magic. And any stupid, dumb thought that I had in my head was absolutely gone. It was one of the coolest things that I had ever seen in my life. Not only was the fight epic, Vegeta was epic, Goku was epic, the way they just ripped their shirts off and they got jacked and they started going after it, it was wild. And I tuned in every single week for the rest of my life from that moment on, it was all Dragon Ball. It was so much Dragon Ball that the way that I was growing up, at the time, it's like you didn't have Dragon Ball Super or any of these other things, right? So because you didn't have that stuff, you kind of just went with what you would read on the internet. And at the time, I would start Googling things like, oh, Dragon Ball this or the Dragon Ball story or whatever the case was. And I start getting a whole bunch of Dragon Ball Abridge or things like that, other stuff, right? But I remember also sitting down on YouTube and just watching, completely just watching Dragon Ball Super Saiyan 8, Dragon Ball Super Saiyan 9, Dragon Ball Super Saiyan 40, Dragon Ball Super Saiyan 58. Like, it was like, I wanted to know what it was. And if you remember, I'm sure you have to remember this. You would sit on the computer and you would watch these videos that showed different pictures of supposed different uh, Super Saiyans with that freaking rock music in the back or metal, whatever it was at the time. And it was just, uh, it was like Linkin Park a lot. <laughs> and then it would, you would just see all these different Dragon Ball uh, Super Saiyans that never actually existed, but the hair just kept growing. And I spent a lot of my time doing that. 
Um, I was also big into art uh, growing up, and I guess to this day I still am. And a lot of my art books are filled with Dragon Ball drawings, Dragon Ball art. And a lot of never it never came from my own head, of course, because I couldn't do that. But I would like Google something, I would see it, and then I would draw it. And it'd be a lot of Goku. I grew up from the that moment forward, as, since I saw that very first episode of Dragon Ball Z Kai, I grew up just a huge fan of Dragon Ball. It became part of me. And to this day, um, I have grown into just adoring the work and, 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 and trying to experience it. I own uh, a couple of the seasons on DVD. I own um, most of the movies on DVD. I own a lot of Dragon Ball figures. And it's not like the little ones. It's actually not a lot. I'm lying. I only owe like like 10, I think. But they're really good ones to me. They're the big versions that they sell, like the really cool ones that are really detailed. And I have a couple of those. And um, I love it. You know, I love it. It's It was just, it was great growing up a Dragon Ball fan. Dragon Ball has just kind of, it made a big comeback. And it's been there, you know, it's been there. Although Super ended a couple years ago and we still haven't gotten its follow-up, there's been still a lot of... Uh, the manga has still been releasing and, and continuing that story. So, you know, we've been eating good as Dragon Ball fans and we had not for a long time. And then the people that started with the show had not for even longer than that, you know. So either way, I just kind of wanted to hop in here and, and, and share my story a little bit and how Akira Toriyama, like, you know, touched me, some little goofy ass Mexican boy. And it, it was just when I saw that he had passed away, I was like, nah, I, no, I mean, I'm getting goosebumps right now just thinking about it. It, it sucks. It sucks big time. And you know what sucks even more is that he was only 68 years old. And I know, like, sometimes for many of us, especially if we're much younger, we believe, like, oh, 68 is old. But in, in reality, it's not that old. It's not that old. And, you know, 68, he, truth truthfully, he, he, he had another good 15, 20 years of being himself, you know. It's, 68 is still very young. I mean, I love Dragon Ball, and I will continue to do so. And, and that, that it's a blow, big blow. So rest in peace, Akira Toriyama. Thank you for all the memories. I am so happy that I stopped <laughs> and watched uh, Dragon Ball Z. Mm -hmm.